Hi guys, it's Chris at Cork and Crown, back at my cider desk with some more cider to try. And it's a blend today from Herefordshire, from Greg's Pit in Herefordshire. And it's got a red label, as you can see, which means it's a cider, not a peri. The uh, peri labels are green. And the Kingston, uh, the brown Kingston black label is yellow, but it's unique in that regard. And it's the 2022 Dabernet and Yarnton Mill, 6.5% from Greg, Greg's Pit in Much Marco. Uh, yeah, that's all it says in the bottle. All it needs to say that the, the lovely woodcut that a local woodcutter did uh, for the label, which is very nice. Very nice, James Marsden. Yep, thank you. Okay, so you may have noticed this is open already. Because I'm at my desk. I'm not in the cider shed. I'm at my desk. And I love James's uh, ciders and perries very much. But some of them have been very fizzy. What I didn't want to do was get cider all over my desk and computer and etc. So I owned it outside. Okay. Told you. Right. Uh, and it was quite fizzy, but perfect. Absolutely perfect. Didn't foam over. Just the cork came out wonderfully. It was absolutely bang on the money. But I haven't tried it. I haven't tried it. So let's try it now. Let's pour it out into this tasting glass, which looks dirty. It's not. It's a stain that it's got in the dishwasher. I don't know how. It's a clean glass. Honest. So let's have a look. So this is an annual blend for uh, James. So it's the one I've had the most. Um, hazy. Obvs. Colour looks amazing. Orange or what? That is gorgeous. Orange colour. I love it. It's a beautiful colour. Just gorgeous, like apricot, um, orange sort of thing going on. Very, very nice. Yeah. Uh, if you have like mango, apricot juice, something like that. I think it's that sort of colour, isn't it? Very hazy. Bottle conditioned. Keeved. So that's some, it should have some residual sugar. But it is 6.5. So it's pretty, pretty beefy, but a lot of the, it was a beefy year for ABVs. It certainly was. We've had like 7% uh, Perry's from James. We've had 8 plus percent from, uh, was it uh, Martin Harris at uh, Butford Organic? I think that was in 2022. Might be in 2021. I think it was 2022. Anyway, big, one of the biggest Perry's I've ever had in terms of ABV. It was massive. Anyway, enough of that. Let's sm smell, sm smell this. Smells nice. It's an orangey character, but Dabonet does bring a little bit of orange to the party, I find. So Dabonet found growing out of a hedge in um, Somerset. I forget the name of the village. Put it on screen. By, by, by a William Dabonet. Uh, early 20th century, so 1900s. So I'm getting some yeast character, some yeastiness for sure, but it's quite hazy. Uh, was it on its side, stored on its side? It might be stored on its side, so it might be got yeast sort of mixed up in there, actually. But below, that, below that, I'm getting a slight pastry character. I'm getting slight orangey notes, actually. Subtle nose, which is nice. I certainly want to taste it, but it is subtle. And the primary thing was that yeastiness over the top, which I don't have a problem with at all. Let's taste it. Masses of bubbles, loads of them, and they're fine bubbles because this is a um, bottle condition. It's keyed and it's bottled. It's a pet nap, so bottled before the end of fermentation to get the fermentation. So it's not like um champagne method where they add sugar, the dose. This is just bottled before the end of fermentation, finishes fermentation and bottled. That's how you get your fizz. That's why it can be a bit less predictable. Um, because you don't know exactly how much fermentation is going to happen sometimes, particularly with Perry's. Um, whereas with with champagnes and stuff like that, you, it's got it's gone to dry, so you know exactly how much sugar's gone into the bottle to be fermented. So you can sit and get you control it more. When it's done this way, it's harder to control, but it's simpler when it works. A bit cold. That yeastness is on the palate. Hint of sauteed apple. 
That orange carrot truffle is coming through on the palate as well. These are both bitter, uh, bitter, um, bittersweet. Not aggressive though. Um, they're both vintage uh, apples as well. So, so in terms of single variety, you see a lot of single varieties of these two. I mean, more than any other varietals, I would have thought. Dabonet and Yanta uh, Mill are the two you see the most. And two of my favourite varietals. I mean, just because they're great. Yanta Mill in particular. Yanta Mill. I've said it before, I'll say it again, from the village of Yarlington in South Somerset, so they're both of Somerset origin, from growing out of this, the wall of the water mill in Yarlington by Mr Bartlett, and then that was uh, propagated by nurseryman um, Harry Masters. Good God. All days a terrible, terrible thing. Harry Masters propagated it. Um, yeah. And we love them for it because it's a super apple. So this has got um, a bit of tannin because they're both bitters, bit, but bitter, bitter sweets. So plenty of sugar. This is not aggressively tannic. A little bit squeaky on the teeth. But a little bit. Not really much leatheriness on the back. Um, I love this side here because it releases it every year. Every year. So these are by any of us, because, because it, um, it's, it's a year-on-year -year thing. It's a probably the most reliable thing he makes in terms of what he has for sale. Um, this has got an orangey character this year. It really does. Not so much ta 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 I think, because the bottle was stored on its side, because I had to, we didn't have space. Um, so I think it's the yeast has been mixed in. I think if you let it sit upright, you know, if you don't know what upright is, it's, it's like that, yeah? Um, let the yeast sit up to the bottom and pour it carefully. Then I think that, yes, less of that yeasty character and more of that orangey sort of apple orange character. And um, yeah, I, I think it would um, benefit from that. Having said that, I really like this. I love that orange, those orangey notes. I'm like, I'm like tangerine and mandarin rather than orange. I really want to say. Um, and it's key that it does have some residual sugar, but it's not sweet. It's subtle. It's a great residual sugar, actually, in this. It's key brilliantly. Um, just the right amount. Just the right amount. So almost anybody can drink this. If you, if you don't have a sweet tooth, it doesn't matter. This is totally balanced. The sweetness works brilliantly, you know. I think people who have sweet tooths mean they don't want an excess of sugar. This does not have that. It's just a lovely balanced cider and it's really good. It's really good. I'm going to open another bottle now after it's lifted, sitting upright for a while, just to see how the difference, and it would be a difference. It would be a difference. It'd be less hazy, less of those yeasty notes. I haven't said that. I'm going to drink this whole bottle very happily indeed. Very happily indeed. Because I like it very much. Yeah, so always fun to open stuff from James. I've still got a bottle of uh, Perry to open from him. The same as the uh, table cider from him, they were uh, table perry we on from him. I forget what the blend was. I'll put it on the screen on the film number. But I think the next one I do from him, which will be the next few films, it's going to be the sparkling version of the table cider that we tried a few films called. So yeah, there you go. 2022, big year for booze, but tasty nonetheless. Dabbing at Yanton Mill. We like it. We like it. So guys, thank you for joining me at my cider desk. I hope you join me again. But until that time, cheers.